Hello everybody and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be welding a little bit of stainless steel. Let's get right to it. This particular tank, I've built a couple of these already for a local gun shop. They use these in restorations of antique firearms when they have a gun that's been discovered that has a lot of rust on it, but they don't want to destroy the original bluing on the gun. They have a process where they can boil the barrels and this is actually built to their specifications. My buddy Brett over at the Survival Comms YouTube channel, and I'll put a link down below to find his channel. He saw this here in the shop and asked me to build him one. So happy to return the favor for all he does here at the channel. And essentially this is a piece of eighth inch 316 stainless and it's just been broken by the local metal shop here. They bent it up for me and sheared off a couple of plates. We're gonna weld the plates on each side here to make a little, uh, a little stand and an end for the tank. But I thought it would be a great opportunity to talk about the challenges of stainless because as I travel around and do a little bit of teaching, people ask a lot about stainless. One of the questions I get is, is stainless hard to weld? Well, my answer is no, but yes. Stainless, as far as the way the puddle reacts and the way it welds when you have a molten puddle with feeding rod in it, behaves very similarly to myocarbon steel, the steel we use every day. However, the similarities, well, they stop right about there. When they make stainless steel, they add alloying elements into the stainless to give it the properties that we like, the stainless for stainless steel. But in doing so, we take away the thermal conductivity of stainless. Stainless steel is a very poor conductor of heat when compared to some of the other alloys we weld, like aluminum. Aluminum is a very good conductor of heat. Stainless steel is a poor conductor of heat. Now, how does that affect us welding? Well, let me explain. Stainless steel, this is a piece of 316 stainless. If we were to light up and strike an arc right here in the middle, immediately as we increased our heat from our weld, this is gonna wanna expand, it's gonna wanna grow. But out here is still close to room temperature or slightly above room temperature. Here, we could be easily reaching over a thousand degrees pretty quickly. This is going to expand but because this is not a thermally conductive material or a good thermally conductive material, it's not allowing that heat to move over here and make the outside expand at the same rate that the inside is. So this grows. That's where the twisting and the warping come from. And unless you've had it explained to you and you understand how to kind of deal with it, your project can turn into a big old twisted thing that you can't get straight and you get pretty frustrated with. There are a few little tricks and we'll talk about them in a minute to deal with that. Now, one of the other traits of stainless steel, stainless needs to be protected on all sides from the atmosphere. When you weld and you're creating an arc over here, either your TIG torch or your MIG torch is going to be protecting that from the atmosphere. The back side of the weld where you're not welding still glows red and stainless reacts to the oxygen in the atmosphere even when it's not at a molten temperature. If you overheat it and don't protect it from the atmosphere, you get what we commonly refer to as sugaring. We have the TIG 200 set to 120 amps. We're using pure argon gas, DC electrode negative, a purple tungsten uh, is what I have in here right now. This is a piece of, of stainless weld coupon. Right here down the middle, I'm gonna run a bead. And I'm gonna intentionally weld it a little bit hot because I wanna exaggerate the sugaring so that you guys can see it. Got a nice little bead down there on the front. We didn't spend a lot of time, but if you look here at the bottom, there's the sugaring. Can you see that? Now we can grind it all off there and kind of dress it up, but it's never going to be right. It's going to be pitted and ugly. And this is inherently always going to be a weak area in the stainless from now on. Now, how do we deal with that? The best way to do this is with an argon flood booth, cover everything with argon, 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 argon. However, you know, we, we know that in our shops, a lot of times we just don't have that. I'm just going to tell you a couple of easy ones that you can use here in your shop. Now, Solar Flux is a product. You can buy it from your weld supply. Solar Flux is a powder, and you mix it with just denatured alcohol. 
rubbing alcohol, isopropyl rubbing alcohol to make a paste. And then you put that paste on the back side of where you're welding. What happens is when we go to this side and we start to weld, when you make this weld, this out here, especially on sheet goods, because they're so thin, glows red hot, white hot sometimes. And we wanna not let that oxygen get to it. So that solar flux, uh, creates a flux covering similar to like stick welding that you would have to chip off after stick welding. And just like that, if it's an appearance grade, you are going to have to remove that solar flux. And sometimes it's a bit of a booger bear to get off there. Requires wire brushes, some time a grinder. But if it's in a difficult to cover area, say in the back of a fixture and you still need a strong weld, solar flux isn't a bad option. There are other products that are out there on the market, but honestly, one of the easiest and least expensive and reusable ways that I've uh, come, I don't say I come up with, it's not my idea, it was passed on to me by people that are passing on the good news like I am to you, but is to use copper. If we were welding on one side of this stainless plate here, we could take this piece of copper and clamp it to the back. Now the copper does a couple of things. It helps control the heat. That it does and it does well. The copper will not stick to the stainless even if it becomes molten. Also, because it's laying flat against it, it doesn't allow the oxygen to come in or very small amounts of oxygen to come in. It keeps that, that atmosphere covered. Anytime you have metal broken, broken again is a way in metalworking we say bent. Anytime you have metal bent, it's never exact. It's pretty close usually. And you're gonna see here that this angle was off just a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tack this corner right here. And then I'm gonna come over and tack this corner here and then I'm going to stand it up and rotate that to get this seam, and we're going to put tacks on this seam. And then we're going to take a clamp and squeeze this together this way and bring this side back to be parallel, and then we'll tack this side, we'll tack the bottom. Then we're going to add the copper bars, and I'll show you how those copper bars help this weld come out real nice. All right, so we've got it all tacked together. A bunch of little tiny tack welds. Now we're gonna add the copper. Well, pretty simple and straightforward. Take this copper bar, it's got a 90 degree corner right here. I'm just gonna put it in there like that and I'm gonna clamp it. We've got this little piece I have them cut various sizes for that very reason. Now, I can't get in there to put pressure on the bottom. What I've done, I've got just a couple of pieces of really drop material. I'm just gonna stack them in there. And I can put the F clamp on there. And I have enough reach for the forcing screw just to put a little pressure on there. Now, it's a little bit of a slow process. I'm gonna do it a little bit at the time. What we'll do is we'll weld a little bit on the bottom, a little bit on the side, and we're gonna kind of work back and forth, work around to make it happen. All right, well, I got this thing all welded up. It came out really good. A couple of takeaways here. I forgot to put a piece of copper on the outside edge of this here and I got about halfway through and then realized that I went ahead and finished the weld, but I did half of it with the copper bar off and half of it with it on. There's a little bit of sugaring on one side there and it's not real bad. Honestly, there's only one little spot right there. And I wanted to give you that comparison. I just went ahead and finished half of the weld without the copper bar on it, slapped the copper bar on the other side and, and welded it. There's a big difference. Inside here came out outstanding. Other than a little bit of the discoloration from the heat, there is absolutely no sugaring of any kind, no distortion, everything's great. It's a little tiny bit out of square here, just a little bit, not bad. If it gives us a problem, I'll either shim it or we'll try to twist it or maybe even put a little bit of a grinder work for it for Brett, whatever he wants to make him happy. I appreciate Brett from the Survival Comms YouTube channel. Let me use this project uh, to help teach you guys a thing or two. If you have any experience working with dealing with stainless, be sure to put the comments down below because your experience leads to somebody else learning from what you've already had to learn. Everybody, I appreciate you sticking till the end. Thanks for watching and we'll see you real soon.